Apocrypha is very well attested in surviving manuscripts of the Christian Bible. See, for example, Codex Vaticanus, Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Alexandrinus, Vulgate, and Peshda. After the Lutheran and Catholic canons were defined by Luther, see 1534, and Trent, April 8, 1546, respectively, early Protestant editions of the Bible, notably the Luther Bible in German and 1611 King James Version in English, did not omit these books but placed them in a separate apocrypha section apart from the Old and New Testaments to indicate their status. The 1647 Westminster Confession of Faith during the English Civil War, 1642-1651, specifically excluded the Apocrypha. Thus, Bibles printed by English Protestants who separated from the Church of England began to exclude these books. The Book of Baruch. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 22. And these are the words of the book, which Baruch the son of Neria, the son of Majas, the son of Sedishas, the son of Asadias, the son of Chelshas, wrote in Babylon. In the fifth year, and in the seventh day of the month, what time as the Chaldeans took Jerusalem and burnt it with fire? And Baruch did read the words of this book in the hearing of Jechonias the son of Joachim king of Judah, and in the ears of all the people that came to hear the book, and in the hearing of the nobles, and of the king's sons, and in the hearing of the elders, and of all the people, from the lowest unto the highest, even of all them that dwelt at Babylon by the river Sud. Whereupon they wept, fasted, and prayed before the Lord. They made also a collection of money according to every man's power. And they sent it to Jerusalem unto Joachim the high priest, the son of Chelshes, son of Salem, and to the priests, and to all the people which were found with him at Jerusalem. At the same time when he received the vessels of the house of the Lord, that were carried out of the temple, to return them into the land of Judah, the tenth day of the month Sivan, namely, silver vessels, which Sedishas the son of Joshes, king of Jada, had made, after that Nabuchodonosor king of Babylon had carried away Jechonias, and the princes, and the captives, and the mighty men, and the people of the land, from Jerusalem, and brought them unto Babylon. And they said, Behold, we have sent you money to buy you burnt offerings, and sin offerings, and incense, and prepare ye manna, and offer upon the altar of the Lord our God. And pray for the life of Nabuchodonosor king of Babylon, and for the life of Balthasar his son, that their days may be upon earth as the days of heaven. And the Lord will give us strength and lighten our eyes, and we shall live under the shadow of Nabuchodonosor king of Babylon, and under the shadow of Balthasar his son, and we shall serve them many days, and find favor in their sight. Pray for us also unto the Lord our God, for we have sinned against the Lord our God, and unto this day the fury of the Lord and his wrath is not turned from us. And ye shall read this book which we have sent unto you, to make confession in the house of the Lord, upon the feasts and solemn days. And ye shall say, To the Lord our God belongeth righteousness, but unto us the confusion of faces, as it is come to pass this day, unto them of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to our kings, and to our princes, and to our priests, and to our prophets, and to our fathers. For we have sinned before the Lord, and disobeyed him, and have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our God, to walk in the commandments that he gave us openly. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt, unto this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord our God, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Wherefore the evils cleaved unto us, and the curse, which the Lord appointed by Moses his servant at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Egypt, to give us a land that floweth with milk and honey, like as it is to see this day. Nevertheless we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our God, according to unto all the words of the prophets, whom he sent unto us. But every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart, to serve strange gods, and to do evil in the sight of the Lord our God. Chapter 2 Verses 1 to 3 to 5 Therefore the Lord hath made good his word, which he pronounced against us, and against our judges that judged Israel, and against our kings, and against our princes, and against the men of Israel and Judah to bring upon us great plagues, such as never happened under the whole heaven, as it came to pass in Jerusalem, 
according to the things that were written in the law of Moses, that a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter. Moreover, he hath delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, to be as a reproach and desolation among all the people round about, where the Lord hath scattered them. Thus we were cast down, and not exalted, because we have sinned against the Lord our God, and have not been obedient unto his voice. To the Lord our God appertaineth righteousness, but unto us and to our fathers open shame, as appeareth this day. For all these plagues are come upon us, which the Lord hath pronounced against us. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 37. O Lord Almighty, God of Israel, the soul in anguish, the troubled spirit, crieth unto thee. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful, and have pity upon us, because we have sinned before thee. For thou endurest forever, and we perish utterly. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites, and of their children, which have sinned before thee, and not hearkened unto the voice of thee their God, for the which caused these plagues to cleave unto us. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. For thou art the Lord our God, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. And for this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, to the intent that we should call upon thy name, and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us, for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments, according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. Here, Israel, the commandments of life, Give ear to understand wisdom. How happy it Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxen old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead, that thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. For if thou hast walked in the way of God, thou shouldest have dwelled in peace forever. Learn where is wisdom, where is strength, where is understanding that thou mayest know also where is the length of days and life, where is the light of the eyes and peace, who hath found out her place, or who hath come into her treasures. Where are the princes of the heathen become, and such as ruled the beasts upon the earth? They that had their pastime with the fowls of the air, and they that hoarded up silver and gold, wherein men trust, and made no end of their getting. For they that wrought in silver, and were so careful, and whose works are unsearchable, they are vanished and go down to the grave, and others are come up in their stead. Young men have seen light, and dwelt upon the earth, but the way of knowledge have they not known, nor understood the paths thereof, nor laid hold of it. Their children were far off from that way. It hath not been heard of in Chanon, neither hath it been seen in Themen. The Agarines that seek wisdom upon earth, the merchants of Marin and of Themen, the authors of fables, and searchers out of understanding. None of these have known the way of wisdom, or remember her paths. O Israel, how great is the house of God, and how large is the place of his possession! Great, and hath none end, high, and unmeasurable. There were the giants famous from the beginning, that were of so great stature, and so expert in war. Those did not the Lord choose, neither gave he the way of knowledge unto them. But they were destroyed, because they had no wisdom, and perished through their own foolishness. Who hath gone up into heaven, and taken her, and brought her down from the clouds? Who hath gone over the sea, and found her, and will bring her for pure gold? No man knoweth her way, nor thinketh of her path. But he that knoweth all things knoweth her, and hath found her out with his understanding. He that prepared the earth for evermore hath filled it with four-footed beasts. He that sendeth forth light, and it goeth, calleth again, and it obeyeth him with fear. The stars shined in their watches and rejoiced. When he calleth them, they say, Here we be. And so with cheerfulness they showed light unto him that made them. This is our God, and there shall none other be accounted of in comparison to him. He hath found out all the way of knowledge, and hath given it unto Jacob his servant, and to Israel his beloved. Afterward did he show himself upon earth, and conversed with men. 
chapter 4, verses 1 to 37. This is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. He was sold to the nations, not for your destruction. But because ye moved God to wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils, and not to God. Ye have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of God coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwells about Zion, God hath brought upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate, because they departed from the law of God. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Let them that dwell about Zion come, and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting hath brought upon them. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, who neither reverenced old man, nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow, and left her that was alone desolate without daughters. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Go your way, O my children, go your way, for I am left desolate. I have put off the clothing of peace, and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children, cry unto the Lord, and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but God will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our God, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from God, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so, being returned, seek him ten times more. For he that hath brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee, and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served, miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin, and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from God. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. Chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. Put off, O Jerusalem, the garment of mourning and affliction, and put on the comeliness of the glory that cometh from God forever. Cast about thee a double garment of the righteousness which cometh from God, and set a diadem on thine head of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show thy brightness unto every country under heaven. For thy name shall be called of God for ever the peace of righteousness, and the glory of God's worship. Arise, O Jerusalem, 
and stand on high, and look about toward the east, and behold thy children gathered from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of God. For they departed from thee on foot, and were led away of their enemies, but God bringeth them unto the exalted with glory, as children of the kingdom. For God hath appointed that every high hill and banks of long continuance should be cast down and valleys filled up, to make even the ground, that Israel may go safely in the glory of God. Moreover, even the woods and every sweet-smelling tree shall overshadow Israel by the commandment of God. For God shall lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that cometh from him. The Psalms of Solomon, verses 1-8 to I cried unto the Lord when I was in distress, unto God when sinners assailed. Suddenly the alarm of war was heard before me. I said, He will hearken to me, for I am full of righteousness. I thought in my heart that I was full of righteousness, because I was well off and had become rich in children. Their wealth spread to the whole earth, and their glory unto the end of the earth. They were exalted unto the stars. They said they would never fall. But they became insolent in their prosperity, and they were without understanding. Their sins were in secret, and even I had no knowledge of them. Their transgressions went beyond those of the heathen before them. They utterly polluted the holy things of the Lord. 2. A Psalm of Solomon Concerning Jerusalem, verses 1-41 to When the sinner waxed proud with a battering ram, he cast down fortified walls, and thou didst not restrain him. Alien nations ascended thine altar, they trampled it proudly with their sandals, because the sons of Jerusalem had defiled the holy things of the Lord, and profaned with iniquities the offerings of God. Therefore, he said, Cast them far from me. It was set at naught before God, it was utterly dishonored. The sons and the daughters were in grievous captivity, sealed was their neck, branded was it among the nations. According to their sins hath he done unto them, for he hath left them in the hands of them that prevailed. He hath turned away his face from pitying them, young and old, and their children together. For they had done evil one in all, in not hearkening. And the heavens were angry, and the earth abhorred them. For no man upon it had done what they did, and the earth recognized all thy righteous judgments, O God. They set the sons of Jerusalem to be mocked at in return for the harlots in her. Every wayfarer entered in in the full light of day. They made mock with their transgressions, as they themselves were wont to do. In the full light of day they revealed their iniquities. And the daughters of Jerusalem were defiled in accordance with thy judgment, because they had defiled themselves with unnatural intercourse. I am pained in my bowels and my inward parts for these things, and yet I will justify thee, O God, in uprightness of heart, for in thy judgments is thy righteousness displayed, O God. For thou hast rendered to the sinners according to their deeds, yea, according to their sins, which were very wicked. Thou hast uncovered their sins, that thy judgment might be manifest. Thou hast wiped out their memorial from the earth. God is a righteous judge, and he is no respecter of persons. For the nations reproached Jerusalem, trampling it down. Her beauty was dragged down from the throne of glory. She girded on sackcloth instead of comely raiment. A rope was about her head instead of a crown. She put off the glorious diadem which God had set upon her. In dishonor was her beauty cast upon the ground. And I saw and entreated the Lord, and said, Long enough, O Lord, has thine hand been heavy on Israel in bringing the nations upon them. For they have made sport unsparingly in wrath and fierce anger. And they will make an utter end, unless thou, O Lord, rebuke them in thy wrath. For they have done it not in zeal, but in lust of soul, pouring out their wrath upon us with a view to rapine. Delay not, O God, to recompense them on their heads, to turn the pride of the dragon into dishonor. And I had not long to wait before God showed me the insolent one slain on the mountains of Egypt, esteemed of less account than the least on land and sea. His body, too, born hither and thither on the billows with much insolence, with none to bury him, because he had rejected him with dishonor. He reflected not that he was a man, and reflected not on the latter end. He said, I will be lord of land and sea, 
and he recognized not that it is God who is great, mighty in his great strength. He is king over the heavens, and judge kings and kingdoms. It is he who setteth me up in glory, and bringeth down the proud to eternal destruction and dishonor, because they knew him not. And now behold, ye princes of the earth, the judgment of the Lord, for a great king and righteous is he, judging all that is under the heaven. Bless God, ye that fear the Lord with wisdom, for the mercy of the Lord will be upon them that fear him in the judgment, so that he will distinguish between the righteous and the sinner, and recompense the sinners forever according to their deeds. And have mercy on the righteous, delivering him from the affliction of the sinner, and recompensing the sinner for what he hath done to the righteous. For the Lord is good to them that call upon him in patience, doing according to his mercy to his pious ones, establishing them at all times before him in strength. Blessed be the Lord forever before his servants. 3. A Psalm of Solomon Concerning the Righteous 1-16 Why sleepest thou, O my soul, and blessest not the Lord? Sing a new song unto God who is worthy to be praised. Sing and be wakeful against his awaking, for good is a psalm sung to God from a glad heart. The righteous remember the Lord at all times, with thanksgiving and declaration of the righteousness of the Lord's judgments. The righteous despiseth not the chastening of the Lord, his will is always before the Lord. The righteous stumbleth and holdeth the Lord righteous. He falleth and looketh out for what God will do to him. He seeketh out whence his deliverance will come. The steadfastness of the righteous is from God their deliverer. Their lodge it not in the house of the righteous sin upon sin. The righteous continually searcheth his house to remove utterly all iniquity done by him in error. He maketh atonement for sins of ignorance by fasting and afflicting his soul, and the Lord counteth guiltless every pious man in his house. The sinner stumbleth and curseth his life, the day when he was begotten and his mother's travail. He addeth sins to sins while he lieth. He falleth verily grievous is his fall and riseth no more. The destruction of the sinner is for ever, and he shall not be remembered when the righteous is visited. This is the portion of sinners for ever. But they that fear the Lord shall rise to life eternal, and their life shall be in the light of the Lord, and shall come to an end no more. 4. A Conversation of Solomon with the Men Pleasers.1-29 Wherefore sittest thou, O profane man, in the counsel of the pious, seeing that thy heart is far removed from the Lord, provoking with transgressions the God of Israel? Extravagant in speech, extravagant in outward seeming beyond all men, is he that is severe of speech in condemning sinners in judgment. And his hand is first upon him, as though he acted in zeal, and yet he is himself guilty in respect of manifold sins and of wantonness. His eyes are upon every woman without distinction. His tongue lieth when he maketh contract with an oath. By night and in secret he sinneth as though unseen, with his eyes he talketh to every woman of evil compacts. He is swift to enter every house with cheerfulness as though guileless. Let God remove those that live in hypocrisy in the company of the pious, even the life of such an one with corruption of his flesh and penury. Let God reveal the deeds of the men-pleasers, the deeds of such an one with laughter and derision. That the pious may count righteous the judgment of their God, when sinners are removed from before the righteous, even the man-pleaser who uttereth law guilefully. And their eyes are fixed upon any man's house that is still secure, that they may, like the serpent, destroy the wisdom of, with words of transgressors. His words are deceitful, that he may accomplish his wicked desire. He never ceaseth from scattering families as though they were orphans, yea, he layeth waste a house on account of his lawless desire. He deceiveth with words, saying, There is none that seeth or judge it. He fills one house with lawlessness, and then his eyes are fixed upon the next house, to destroy it with words that give wane to desire. Yet with all these his soul, like Sheol, is not sated. Let his portion, O Lord, be dishonored before thee. Let him go forth groaning and come home cursed. Let his life be spent in anguish and penury and want, O Lord. Let his sleep be beset with pains and his awaking with perplexities. Let sleep be withdrawn from his eyelids at night. 
let him fail dishonorably in every work of his hands. Let him come home empty-handed to his house, and his house be void of everything wherewith he could sate his appetite. Let his old age be spent in childless loneliness until his removal by death. Let the flesh of the men-pleasers be rent by wild beasts, and let the bones of the lawless lie dishonored in the sight of the sun. Let ravens peck out the eyes of the hypocrites. For they have laid waste many houses of men in dishonor, and scattered them in their lust. And they have not remembered God, nor feared God in all these things. But they have provoked God's anger, and vexed him. May he remove them from off the earth, because with deceit they beguiled the souls of the flawless. Blessed are they that fear the Lord in their flawlessness. The Lord shall deliver them from guileful men and sinners, and deliver us from every stumbling block of the lawless men. Let God destroy them that insolently work all unrighteousness, for a great and mighty judge is the Lord our God in righteousness. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon all them that love thee. 5. A Psalm of Solomon 1-21 O Lord God, I will praise thy name with joy, in the midst of them that know thy righteous judgments. For thou art good and merciful, the refuge of the poor. When I cry to thee, do not silently disregard me. For no man taketh spoil from a mighty man. Who then can take aught of all that thou hast made, except thou thyself givest? For man and his portion lie before thee in the balance. He cannot add to, so as to enlarge, what has been prescribed by thee. O God, when we are in distress we call upon thee for help, and thou dost not turn back our petition for thou art our God. Cause not thy hand to be heavy upon us, lest through necessity we sin. Even though thou restore us not, we will not keep away, but unto thee will we come. For if I hunger, unto thee will I cry, O God, and thou wilt give to me. Birds and fish dost thou nourish, in that thou givest rain to the steps that green grass may spring up, so to prepare fodder in the step for every living thing. For if I hunger, unto thee will I cry, O God, and thou wilt give to me. Birds and fish dost thou nourish, in that thou givest rain to the steps that green grass may spring up, so to prepare fodder in the step for every living thing. And if they hunger, unto thee do they lift up their face. Kings and rulers and peoples thou dost nourish, O God, and who is the help of the poor and needy, if not thou, O Lord? And thou wilt hearken for who is good and gentle, but thou making glad the soul of the humble by opening thine hand in mercy. Man's goodness is bestowed grudgingly, and if he repeats it without murmur that But thy gift is great in goodness and wealth, and he whose hope is set on thee shall have no lack of gifts. Upon the whole earth is thy mercy, O Lord, in goodness. Happy is he whom God remembereth in granting to him a due sufficiency. If a man abounds over much, he sinneth. Sufficient are moderate means with righteousness, and hereby the blessing of the Lord becomes abundance with righteousness. They that fear the Lord rejoice in good gifts, and thy goodness is upon Israel in thy kingdom. Blessed is the glory of the Lord, for he is our King. 6. In Hope of Solomon 1-9 Happy is the man whose heart is fixed to call upon the name of the Lord. When he remembereth the name of the Lord, he will be saved. His ways are made even by the Lord, and the works of his hands are preserved by the Lord his God. At what he sees in his bad dreams, his soul shall not be troubled. When he passes through rivers and the tossing of the seas, he shall not be dismayed. He ariseth from his sleep, and blesseth the name of the Lord. When his heart is at peace, he singeth to the name of his God, and he entreateth the Lord for all his house. And the Lord heareth the prayer of every one that feareth God, and every request of the soul that hopes for him doth the Lord accomplish. Blessed is the Lord, who showeth mercy to those who love him in sincerity. 7. Of Solomon, of Turning, 1-9 to nine. Make not thy dwelling afar from us, O God, lest they assail us that hate us without cause. For thou hast rejected them, O God, let not their foot trample upon thy holy inheritance. Chasten us thyself in thy good pleasure, but give us not up to the nations. For, if thou sendest pestilence, 
thou thyself givest a charge concerning us, for thou art merciful, and wilt not be angry to the point of consuming us. While thy name dwelleth in our midst, we shall find mercy, and the nations shall not prevail against us. For thou art our shield, and when we call upon thee, thou hearkenest to us. For thou wilt pity the seed of Israel forever, and thou wilt not reject them, but we shall be under thy yoke forever, and under the rod of thy chastening. Thou wilt establish us in the time that thou helpest us, showing mercy to the house of Jacob on the day wherein thou didst promise to help them. 8. Of Solomon. Of the chief musician. 1-40. to Distress and the sound of war hath my ear heard, the sound of a trumpet announcing slaughter and calamity, the sound of much people as of an exceeding high wind, as a tempest with mighty fire sweeping through the Negev. And I said in my heart, Surely God judged us. A sound I hear moving towards Jerusalem, the holy city. My loins were broken at what I heard, my knees tottered. My heart was afraid, my bones were dismayed like flax. I said, They established their ways in righteousness. I thought upon the judgments of God since the creation of heaven and earth. I held God righteous in his judgments which have been from of old. God laid bare their sins in the full light of day. All the earth came to know the righteous judgments of God. In secret places underground their iniquities were committed to provoke him to anger. They wrought confusion, some with mother and father with daughter. They committed adultery with every man with his neighbor's wife. They concluded covenants with one another with an oath touching these things. They plundered the sanctuary of God, as though there was no avenger. They trod the altar of the Lord, coming straight from all manner of uncleanness, and with menstrual blood they defiled the sacrifices, as though these were common flesh. They left no sin undone, wherein they surpassed not the heathen. Therefore God mingled for them a spirit of wandering, and gave them to drink a cup of undiluted wine, that they might become drunken. He brought him that is from the end of the earth, that smiteth mightily. He decreed war against Jerusalem and against her land. The princes of the land went to meet him with joy. They said unto him, Blessed be thy way. Come ye, enter ye in with peace. They made the rough ways even before his entering in. They opened the gates to Jerusalem. They crowned its walls. As a father entereth the house of his sons, so he entered Jerusalem in peace. He established his feet there in great safety. He captured her fortresses and the wall of Jerusalem, for God himself led him in safety while they wandered. He destroyed their princes and everyone wise in counsel. He poured out the blood of the inhabitants of Jerusalem like the water of uncleanness. He led away from their sons and daughters, whom they had begotten in defilement. They did according to their uncleanness, even as their fathers had done. They defiled Jerusalem and the things that had been hallowed to the name of God. But God hath shown himself righteous in his judgments upon the nations of the earth, and the pious servants of God are like innocent lambs in their midst. Worthy to be praised is the Lord that judgeth the whole earth in his righteousness. Behold now, O God, thou hast shown us thy judgment in thy righteousness. Our eyes have seen thy judgments, O God. We have justified thy name that is honored forever. For thou art the God of righteousness, judging Israel with chastening. Turn, O God, thy mercy upon us, and have pity upon us. Gather together the dispersed of Israel, with mercy and goodness. For thy faith thankfulness is with us, and though we have stiffened our neck, yet thou art our chastener. Overlook us not, O our God, lest the nations swallow us up, as though there were none to deliver. But thou art our God from the beginning, and upon thee is our hope set, O Lord, and we will not depart from thee, for the good are thy judgments upon us. Ours and our children's be thy good pleasure forever, O Lord our Savior. We shall never more be moved. The Lord is worthy to be praised for his judgments with the mouth of his pious ones, and blessed be Israel of the Lord forever nine, of Solomon. For rebuke one to nineteen. When Israel has led away captive into a strange land, when they fell away from the Lord who redeemed them, they were cast away from the inheritance which Lord had given them. Among every nation were the dispersed of Israel according to the word of God, that thou mightiest be justified, O God, in thy righteousness by reason of our transgressions. 
for thou art a just judge over all the peoples of the earth. For from thy knowledge none that doth unjustly is hidden, and the righteous deeds of thy pious ones are before thee, O Lord, where then can a man hide himself from thy knowledge, O God? Our works are subject to our own choice and power to do right or wrong in the works of our hands. He that doth righteousness layeth up life for himself with the Lord, and he that doth wrongly forfeits his life to destruction. For the judgments of the Lord are given in righteousness to every man and his house. Unto whom art thou good, O God, except to them that call upon the Lord, and in thy righteousness thou visitest the sons of men. He cleanseth from sins a soul when it maketh confession, when it maketh acknowledgment. For shame is upon us and upon our faces on account of all these things. And to whom doth he forgive sins, except to them that have sinned? Thou blessest the righteous, and dost not reprove them for the sins that they have committed, and thy goodness is upon them that sin when they repent. And now thou art our God, and we the people whom thou hast loved. Behold and show pity, O God of Israel, for we are thine, and remove not thy mercy from us, lest they assail us. For thou didst choose the seed of Abraham before all the nations, and didst set thy name upon us, O Lord, and thou wilt not reject us forever. Thou madest a covenant with our fathers concerning us, and we hope in thee when our soul turneth unto thee. The mercy of the Lord be upon the house of Israel forever and ever. 10. A Hymn of Solomon, 1-8 Happy is the man whom the Lord remembereth with reproving, and whom he restraineth from the way of evil with strokes, that he may be cleansed from sin, that it may not be multiplied. He that maketh ready his back for strokes shall be cleansed, for the Lord is good to them that endure chastening. For he maketh straight the ways of the righteous, and doth not pervert them by his chastening. And the mercy of the Lord is upon them that love him in truth, and the Lord remembereth his servants in mercy. For the testimony is in the law of the eternal covenant. The testimony of the Lord is on the ways of men in his visitation. Just and kind is our Lord in his judgments forever, and Israel shall praise the name of the Lord in gladness. And the pious shall give thanks in the assembly of the people, and on the poor shall God have mercy in the gladness of Israel. For good and merciful is God forever, and the assemblies of Israel shall glorify the name of the Lord. The salvation of the Lord be upon the house of Israel unto everlasting gladness. 11. Of Solomon unto expectation. 1 to 9. Blow ye in Zion on the trumpet to summon the saints. Cause ye to be heard in Jerusalem the voice of him that bringeth good tidings. For God hath had pity on Israel in visiting them. Stand on the height, O Jerusalem, and behold thy children from the east and the west, gathered together by the Lord. From the north they come in the gladness of their God. From the isles a far off God hath gathered them. High mountains hath he abased into a plain for them. The hills fled at their entrance. The woods gave them shelter as they passed by. Every sweet-smelling tree God caused to spring up for them, that Israel might pass by in the visitation of the glory of their God. Put on, O Jerusalem, thy glorious garments, make ready thy holy robe, for God hath spoken good concerning Israel forever and ever. Let the Lord do what he hath spoken concerning Israel and Jerusalem. Let the Lord raise up Israel by his glorious name. The mercy of the Lord be upon Israel forever and ever. 12. Of Solomon. Against the tongue of transgressors. 1-7. to O Lord, deliver my soul from the lawless and wicked man, from the tongue that is lawless and slanderous, and speaketh lies and deceit. Manifoldly twisted are the words of the tongue of the wicked man, even as among a people of fire that burneth up their beauty. So he delights to fill houses with a lying tongue, to cut down the trees of gladness which setteth on fire transgressors, to involve households in warfare by means of slanderous lips. May God remove far from the innocent the lips of transgressors by bringing them to want, and may the bones of slanderers be scattered far away from them that fear the Lord. In flaming fire perish the slanderous tongue far away from the pious. May the Lord preserve the quiet soul that hateth the unrighteous, and may the Lord establish the man that followeth peace at home. The salvation of the Lord be upon Israel his servant forever.
and let the sinners perish together at the presence of the Lord, but let the Lord's pious ones inherit the promises of the Lord. 13. Of Solomon, the Psalm, Comfort for the Righteous One to Eleven. The right hand of the Lord hath covered me, the right hand of the Lord hath spared us. The arm of the Lord hath saved us from the sword that passed through, from famine and the death of sinners. Noisome beasts ran upon them, with their teeth they tore their flesh, and with their molars crushed their bones. But from all these things the Lord delivered us. The righteous was troubled on account of his errors, lest he should be taken away along with the sinners. For terrible is the overthrow of the sinner, but not one of all these things toucheth the righteous. For not alike are the chastening of the righteous for sins done in ignorance and the overthrow of the sinners. Secretly is the righteous chastened, lest the sinner rejoices over the righteous. For he correcteth the righteous as a beloved son, and his chastisement is as that of firstborn. For the Lord spareth his pious ones, and blotteth out their errors by his chastening. For the life of the righteous shall be forever. But sinners shall be taken away into destruction, and their memorial shall be found no more. But upon the pious is the mercy of the Lord, and upon them that fear him his mercy. 14. A Hymn of Solomon, 1-7 Faithful is the Lord to them that love him in truth, to them that endure his chastening, to them that walk in the righteousness of his commandments, in the law which he commanded us that we might live. The pious of the Lord shall live by it forever. The paradise of the Lord, the trees of life, are his pious ones. Their planting is rooted forever. They shall not be plucked up all the days of heaven. For the portion and the inheritance of God is Israel. But not so are the sinners and transgressors, who love the brief day spent in companionship with their sin. Their delight is in fleeting corruption, and they remember not God. For the ways of men are known before him at all times, and he knoweth the secrets of the heart before they come to pass. Therefore their inheritance is Sheol and darkness and destruction, and they shall not be found in the day when the righteous obtain mercy, but the pious of the Lord shall inherit life in gladness. 15. A Psalm of Solomon, with a Psalm 1 to 15. When I was in distress, I called upon the name of the Lord. I hoped for the help of the God of Jacob, and was saved. For the hope and refuge of the poor art thou, O God. For who, O God, is strong except to give thanks unto thee in truth? And wherein is a man powerful except in giving thanks to thy name? A new psalm with psalm in the gladness of heart, the fruit of the lips with the well-tuned instrument of the tongue, the first fruits of the lips from a pious and righteous heart. He that offereth these things shall never be shaken by evil. The flame of fire and the wrath against the unrighteous shall not touch him, when it goeth forth from the face of the Lord against sinners, to destroy all the substance of sinners. For the mark of God is upon the righteous that they may be saved. Famine and sword and pestilence shall be far from the righteous, for they shall flee away from the pious as men pursued in war, but they shall pursue sinners and overtake them, and they that do lawlessness shall not escape the judgment of God, as by enemies experienced in war shall they be overtaken. For the mark of destruction is upon their forehead, and the inheritance of sinners is destruction and darkness, and their iniquities shall pursue them unto Sheol beneath. Their inheritance shall not be found of their children, for sins shall lay waste the houses of sinners. And sinners shall perish forever in the day of the Lord's judgment, when God visits the earth with his judgment. But they that fear the Lord shall find mercy therein, and shall live by the compassion of their God. But sinners shall perish forever. 16. A Hymn of Solomon, for help to the pious, 1-15. to When my soul slumbered, being afar from the Lord, I had all but slipped down to the pit, when I was far from God. My soul had been well nigh poured out unto death, I had been nigh unto the gates of Sheol with the sinner. When my soul departed from the Lord God of Israel, had not the Lord helped me with his everlasting mercy. He pricked me, as a horse is pricked, that I might serve him, my Savior and helper at all times saved me. I will give thanks unto thee, O God, for thou hast helped me to my salvation, and hast not counted me with sinners to my destruction. Remove not thy mercy from me, O God, nor thy memorial from my heart until I die. Rule me, O God, 
keeping me back from wicked sin, and from every wicked woman that causeth the simple to stumble. And let not the beauty of a lawless woman beguile me, nor any one that is subject to unprofitable sin. Establish the works of my hands before thee, and preserve my goings in the remembrance of thee. Protect my tongue and my lips with words of truth, anger and unreasoning wrath put far from me. Murmuring and impatience and affliction remove far from me, when, if I sin, thou chastenest me that I may return unto thee. But with good will and cheerfulness support my soul. When thou strengthenest my soul, what is given to me will be sufficient for me. For if thou givest not strength, who can endure chastisement with poverty? When a man is rebuked by means of his corruption, thy testing of him is in his flesh and in the affliction of poverty. If the righteous endureth in all these trials, he shall receive mercy from the Lord. 17. A Psalm of Solomon, with Song, of the King.1-51 O Lord, Thou art our King forever and ever, for in Thee, O God, doth our soul glory. How long are the days of man's life upon the earth? As are his days, so is the hope set upon him. But we hope in God, our Deliverer, for the might of our God is forever with mercy, and the kingdom of our God is forever over the nations in judgment. Thou, O Lord, didst choose David to be king over Israel, and swears to him touching his seed, that never should his kingdom fail before thee. But for our sins, sinners rose up against us. They assailed us and thrust us out. What thou hadst not promised to them, they took away from us with violence. They in no wise glorified thy honorable name. They set a worldly monarchy in place of that which was their excellency. They laid waste the throne of David in tumultuous arrogance. But thou, O God, didst cast them down and remove their sea from the earth. In that there rose up against them a man that was alien to our race. According to their sins, didst thou recompenses them, O God, so that it befell them according to their deeds. God showed them no pity. He sought out their seed, and let not one of them go free. Faithful is the Lord in all his judgments which he doth upon the earth. The lawless one laid waste our land, so that none inhabited it. They destroyed young and old and their children together. In the heat of his anger, he sent them away even unto the west, and he exposed the rulers of the land unsparingly to derision. Being an alien, the enemy acted proudly, and his heart was alien from our God. And all things whatsoever he did in Jerusalem, as also the nations in the cities to their gods. And the children of the covenant in the midst of the mingled peoples surpassed them in evil. There was not among them one that wrought in the midst of Jerusalem mercy and truth. They that loved the synagogues of the pious fled from them, like sparrows that fly from their nest. They wandered in deserts that their lives might be saved from harm, and precious in the eyes of them that lived abroad was any that escaped alive from them. Over the whole earth were they scattered by lawless men. For the heavens withheld the rain from dropping upon the earth, springs was stopped that sprang perennially out of the deeps that ran down from lofty mountains. For there was none among them that wrought righteousness and justice. From the chief of them to the least of them all were sinful. The king was a transgressor, the judge disobedient, and the people sinful. Behold, O Lord, and raise up unto them their king, the son of David, at the time in the which thou seest, O God, that he may reign over Israel thy servant, and gird him with strength, that he may shatter unrighteous rulers, and that he may purge Jerusalem from nations that trample her down to destruction. Wisely, righteously, he shall thrust out sinners from the inheritance. He shall destroy the pride of the sinner as a potter's vessel. With a rod of iron, he shall break in pieces all their substance. He shall destroy the godless nations with the word of his mouth. At his rebuke, nations shall flee before him, and he shall reprove sinners for the thoughts of their heart. And he shall gather together a holy people, whom he shall lead in righteousness, and he shall judge the tribes of the people that has been sanctified by the Lord his God. And he shall not suffer unrighteousness to lodge any more in their midst, nor shall there dwell with them any man that knoweth wickedness. For he shall know them, that they are all sons of their God. And he shall divide them according to their tribes upon the land, and neither sojourner nor alien shall sojourn with them any more. He shall judge peoples and nations in the wisdom of his righteousness. Selah.
And he shall have the heathen nations to serve him under his yoke. And he shall glorify the Lord in a place to be seen of all the earth. And he shall purge Jerusalem, making it holy as of old, so that nations shall come from the ends of the earth to see his glory, bringing as gifts her sons who had fainted, and to see the glory of the Lord, wherewith God hath glorified her. And he shall be a righteous king, taught of God, over them, and there shall be no unrighteousness in his days in their midst, for all shall be holy, and their king the anointed of the Lord. For he shall not put his trust in horse and rider and bow, nor shall he multiply for himself gold and silver for war, nor shall he gather confidence from a multitude for the day of battle. The Lord himself is his king, the hope of him that is mighty through his hope in God. All nations shall be in fear before him, for he will smite the earth with the word of his mouth forever. He will bless the people of the Lord with wisdom and gladness, and he himself will be pure from sin, so that he may rule a great people. He will rebuke rulers and remove sinners by the might of his word, and relying upon his God throughout his days he will not stumble, for God will make him mighty by means of his Holy Spirit, and wise by means of the spirit of understanding, with strength and righteousness. And the blessing of the Lord will be with him, he will be strong and stumble not. His hope will be in the Lord, who then can prevail against him. He will be mighty in his works, and strong in the fear of God. He will be shepherding the flock of the Lord faithfully and righteously, and will suffer none among them to stumble in their pasture. He will lead them all aright, and there will be no pride among them that any among them should be oppressed. This will be the majesty of the king of Israel whom God knoweth. He will raise him up over the house of Israel to correct him. His words shall be more refined than costly gold, the choicest. In the assemblies, he will judge the peoples, the tribes of the sanctified. His words shall be like the words of the holy ones in the midst of sanctified peoples. Blessed be they that shall be in those days, in that they shall see the good fortune of Israel, which God shall bring to pass in the gathering together of the tribes. May the Lord hasten his mercy upon Israel. May he deliver us from the uncleanness of unholy enemies. The Lord himself is our king forever and ever. That he may direct every man in the works of righteousness by the fear of God, that he may establish them all before the Lord, a good generation living in the fear of God in the days of mercy. Selah. Great is our God and glorious, dwelling in the highest. It is he who hath established in their courses the lights of heaven for determining seasons from year to year, and they have not turned aside from the way which he appointed them. In the fear of God, they pursue their path every day, from the day God created them and forevermore. And they have erred not since the day he created them. Since the generations of old, they have not withdrawn from their path, unless God commanded them so to do by the command of his servants. 18. A Psalm of Solomon. Again of the Anointed of the Lord. Verses 1-14. Lord, thy mercy is over the works of thy hands forever. Thy goodness is over Israel with a rich gift. Thine eyes look upon them, so that none of them suffers want. Thine ears listen to the hopeful prayer of the poor. Thy judgments are executed upon the whole earth in mercy, and thy love is toward the seed of Abraham, the children of Israel. Thy chastisement is upon us as upon a firstborn, only begotten son, to turn back the obedient soul from folly that is wrought in ignorance. May God cleanse Israel against the day of mercy and blessing, against the day of choice when he bringeth back his anointed. Blessed shall they be that shall be in those days, in that they shall see the goodness of the Lord which he shall perform for the generation that is to come, under the rod of the chastening of the Lord's anointed in the fear of his God, in the spirit of wisdom and righteousness and strength, 